I want to describe my discovery in the simplest terms possible because it will reveal to you why it is true that whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve, regardless of how many times you may have failed in the past or how lofty your aims and hopes may be. I caught my first fleeting glimpse of the profound law which provides the means by which we may choose our own purpose in life and attain it while I was being coached by Andrew Carnegie during the organization of the science of success philosophy. I had just finished telling Mr. Carnegie that I feared he had uh, chosen the wrong person to give the world the first practical philosophy of personal success because of my youth, my lack of education, and my lack of finances. Well, at this point, Mr. Carnegie delivered a lecture that I shall never forget because it changed my entire life and paved the way for my helping to change the lives of millions of people, some of them not yet born. Let me call your attention to a great power which is under your control, said Mr. Carnegie, a power which is greater than poverty, greater than the lack of education, greater than all of your fears and superstitions combined. It is the power to take possession of your own mind and direct it to whatever ends you may desire. This profound power, Mr. Carnegie continued, is the gift of the Creator, and it must have been considered the greatest of all of his gifts to man, because it is the only thing over which man has the complete and unchallengeable right of control and direction. When you speak of your poverty and lack of education, Mr. Carnegie explained, you are simply directing your mind power to attract these undesirable circumstances because it is true that whatever your mind feeds upon, your mind attracts to you. Now you see why it is important that you recognize that all success begins with definiteness of purpose, with a clear picture in your mind of precisely what you want from life. Uh, then Mr. Carnegie continued his speech with a description of a great universal truth which made such an impact upon my mind that I began then and there to give myself a new outlook on life and set up for myself a goal so far above my previous achievements that it shocked my friends and relatives when they heard about it. Everyone, said Mr. Carnegie, comes to the earth plane blessed with the privilege of controlling his mind power and directing it to whatever ends he may choose. But, he continued, everyone brings over with him at birth the equivalent of two sealed envelopes, one of which is clearly labeled the riches you may enjoy if you take possession of your own mind and direct it to ends of your own choice. And the other is labeled the penalties you must pay if you neglect to take possession of your mind and direct it. Facts. And now let me reveal to you, said Mr. Carnegie, the contents of those two sealed envelopes. In the one labeled riches is uh, this list of blessings. One, sound health. Two, peace of mind. Three, a labor of love of your own choice. Four, freedom from fear and worry. Five, a positive mental attitude. Six, material riches of your own choice and quantity. In the sealed envelope, labeled penalties, Mr. Carnegie continued, is this list of the prices one must pay for neglecting to take possession of his own mind. One, ill health. Two, fear and worry. Three, indecision and doubt. Four, frustration and discouragement throughout life. Five, poverty and want. Six, and a whole flock of evils consisting of envy, greed, jealousy, anger, hatred, and superstition. Now, hmm. my... Wow. Superstition. That's mind-blowing. My mission in life is to help you and everyone who needs my help to open up and use the contents of the sealed envelope labeled riches. And the starting point from which you must take off if you wish to write your own ticket from here on out for the remainder of your life, I will describe for you in these simple instructions. One, procure a neat pocket-sized notebook, or something on the order of this one here, loose-leaf affair. 
And on uh, page one, write down a clear description of your major desire in life. The one circumstance or position or thing which you will be willing to accept as your idea of success. And remember before you begin writing that your only limitations are those which you set up in your own mind or permit others to set up for you. And two, on page two of your notebook, write down a clear statement of precisely what you intend to give in return for that which you desire from life. And then start in right where you stand now to begin giving. And three, memorize both of your statements, what you desire and what you intend to give in return for it. And repeat them at least a dozen times daily. And always end your statements with this expression of gratitude for the blessings with which you were gifted at birth. I ask not, O divine providence, for more riches, but more wisdom with which to accept and use wisely the riches I received at birth in the form of the power to control and direct my mind to whatever ends I desire. Amen. Times 12. If you are not too successful or self-satisfied to accept and express this profound prayer, if you accept it and express it in the same spirit of humble sincerity in which I pass it on to you, a new and a better world will reveal itself to you. A world in which you will see reflected the circumstances and the things which you yourself have created. And now let me close this, our first visit, with my favorite expression of gratitude. O oh, divine providence, I ask not for more riches, but more wisdom with which to make wiser use of the riches you gave me at birth, consisting in the power to control and direct my own mind to whatever ends I desire. Okay, so let's put a pause, put a pin in that. He already just gave us almost like the secret to life, the secret to success. Like, and it starts actually with something that you already have, which is a brain and a mind. All it is is just using your mind to create what you want because you already do it because we already do it, man. And what we create with our mind and what we set our minds on, that's what we attract. That's what you attract. They call it the law of attraction. Um, I mean, call it what you want, man. It's just the truth. It's a so-called universal law. What you set your mind on, what you think about, you become. And fear and doubt and discourage, all those things, those are things that you, you know, you better, you're better off not setting your mind on those things because you'll just keep attracting it you know you have power the power that you have it comes from god and that power that god gave you you can use to create what you want and you can just use your mind and like he said not limit yourself don't limit god you know if if you can't figure out how to not limit yourself don't limit your creator don't limit possibilities you know uh I think I'll just kind of leave it there for the time being, just so we can sort of discuss this information and process it and maybe start to apply it. Because again, I mean, it starts with us and you know, we can't be looking outside of ourselves for the answers when we already have it inside of ourselves and you know, in our minds that we already use to get the things that we already get and to think the things that we've been thinking we've been using our minds so let's use it for things that we uh like he was saying things that we see ideally as success you know so i think i'll kind of wait and see if people like this see if they gravitate to it uh yeah i'll go a little bit further for now hold on my name is W. Clement Stone. As general manager of the Napoleon Hill Associates, it is my privilege to introduce you to Napoleon Hill. How do you do? I'm very happy to have this personal visit with you. Won't you be seated, please? <laughs> and uh, now, may I request that you forget all your problems and just relax while I bring you the master key with which you may unlock the door to any opportunity that your mind can conceive. 
Okay, so let's put a pin in that. <laughs> Let me see what you guys think.